Oh hey there, I didn't see you. It's Mike, and today I've been doing a Zen meditation, taking a break from all of those anti-vegan and carnivore response videos that I've been doing for the last 25 videos straight. No, today is just gonna be 100% positivity. A very recent discovery has blown open the paradigm that there are no plant sources of B12. I believe this, I have said this, now I believe that that is scientifically incorrect. We're gonna look at this new, yet very old, tiny plant its B12 content, why it has B12, as well as a bunch of other nutrients that it has, and it's jam-packed. Some have even referred to it as the world's most complete food. I'll let you make that judgment yourself. But we're also gonna talk about the idea of whether or not this could have been a valid source of B12 for our ancestors. And also, you know, look at some of the sustainability and so much more. It's gonna be awesome. I love this plant. Let's go. Right off the bat, I'm sure you've seen this plant before, whether you knew it or not. It's pretty much on every body of water around where I live at least, and it has many names. The less flattering name is duckweed. That's probably what you've heard about it if you know about it, but it's also referred to as water lentils. It's a tiny free-floating aquatic plant and it doesn't actually have anchored roots. It just has this little tail that just hangs there. Just a little baby water lentil. Be lentil with me. Like other plants, there are many varieties of duckweed and they all have different properties. But one amazing fact is that duckweed itself is the fastest growing angiosperm or flowering plant on the planet. Finally, several strains are generally recognized as safe for consumption by the FDA, and it is part of the cuisine in Asia. People are already eating this stuff. As for the B12 content, Market Insider sums up the story pretty well. Their title is that Parable, which is a company, announces natural plant source of vitamin B12 in water lentils and lentin plant protein, which is their product. I believe that lentine is a mix of a couple strains of duckweed, and the keyword here is natural, natural source of B12. The article goes on, it says third-party lab testing has confirmed that their duckweed crop and their lentine protein contain bioactive forms of vitamin B12. These are in the form of adenosylcobalamin, methylcobalamin, and hydroxocobalamin. Seems that adenosylcobalamin is the main one, and remember, B12 is created by bacteria, whether it's an animal or a plant. There is no B12 producing organ, like it doesn't come out of the spleen of an animal, it's from bacteria in animals. And in terms of the plant, it's also gonna be from bacteria, so we're gonna talk about how that B12 gets in there in a little bit. Now for the amount, they say that duckweed contains 750% of the US recommended daily value of the bioactive forms of B12. And that's per 100 grams of dried plant. So that's about 20 micrograms per 100 gram of dried plant. And we only need about 2.4 micrograms a day per adult. 100 grams dried is a lot, it's about a cup, but so is 750% of the daily value. So it looks like you'd only need about 13 grams to reach the daily value, which is not bad, but it appears that some of the B12 is lost in the cold pressing process, but Lentin is at least confident enough to say that one scoop of their powder has 35% of the daily value of bioactive B12. And I wanna mention one particular strain of duckweed that has been bred in Israel that's called Mankai, and it's actually already in the Harvard cafeteria, and the company that created it has done some tests on it, some studies, including this one, which of course is industry funded, it's worth mentioning, but they took people, put them into three groups. One group was the Mankai duckweed group, the other was the soft cheese group, and the third was a pea group, just normal old green peas. And here's the interesting part, they measured B12 levels before and after, and obviously the peas did not change the B12 level, but from the study, quote, the increase in vitamin B12 by Mankai was higher as compared to the changes induced by either cheese or peas. So it raised B12 levels more effectively than cheese, which is awesome. And I'll say at first I was skeptical about the B12 content of this duckweed that they tested in general, because you know you could probably just soak the water you're growing in it with B12 and make it a source of B12, but that would sort of be like a fortification while you're growing it. But I think that's wrong for several reasons. First of all, they claim it's naturally occurring, which would just be a lie if it wasn't. Second of all, the main B12 component was adenosylcobalamin, which means that they didn't use the common cyanocobalamin. I don't think they even found any of that in there. It's the cheapest, most readily available. That's what you would probably use for what it's worth. And third is just why the B12 was in there, which is super interesting stuff. When I was first speculating about how B12 got here, I thought it might be some B12 producing bacteria that maybe got in some cracks on the surface or something and was able to produce B12 because it needs to ferment a little bit. But I was wrong. Back to that study on Mankai, quote, the source of cobalamin seems to be bacteria indicating an important and unsafe suspected symbiosis. The B12 in the mankai is not a bacterial contaminant. Now disinfecting and washing the surface of the plant 
does not reduce the B12 content, it is part of the plant biomass and cannot be removed by highly purified process. They say that we don't know for sure yet, but some unpublished studies say that it's likely endophytes or actually B12 producing bacteria that lives inside the plant cell symbiotically making B12. And this is cool. It's kind of like the symbiotic relationship between algae and fungi known as lichen, all those squiggly things you see on rocks. And it also could indicate that it's a consistent source of B12. We need more data, but because it's a symbiotic relationship that naturally occurs there, it probably needs to happen. We're gonna get back to B12 and whether or not this could have been a natural human ancestor source of B12 or not, but I wanna hit more on the nutrients that exist within this plant because it's actually pretty shocking. Duckweed has a few antioxidants, of course it has chlorophyll, but it also happens to have beta carotene and the carotenoid lutein, which builds up in the eye and can help theoretically prevent macular degeneration from preventing UV damage. As for minerals, this study says, the mineral composition of all Wolfia samples investigated can be characterized as relatively rich in potassium and iron and poor in sodium, making the duckweeds useful for healthy human nutrition. Another thing worth mentioning from this study that actually showed that duckweed helped with glycemic control in patients. They also in passing mention, and I don't approve of animal testing, but that the duckweed iron was able to relieve anemia in rats. Also, if it is grown in a medium that is high in zinc, it will be high in zinc as well, which is cool. And in case you're concerned about anti-nutrients, yes, some of the strains of duckweed have higher oxalates, but apparently if you grow them in a medium with lower calcium, they have lower oxalates. However, they have been bred to have lower levels of anti-nutrients as lentine claims to have. Now for what I'm probably most excited about, and that is the high level of omega-3s here. They are really rich in ALA. From this study, 80% of the fatty acids in duckweed are ALA. It has an insanely good omega ratio and it's not high saturated fat or anything like that. And for a practical comparison from lentine.com, just one scoop of lentine has about half the RDA of omega-3s. Now for what everyone else is gonna be excited about, and that is the protein content. This is a nitrogen fixing plant, which means that it also uses a symbiotic relationship with bacteria to take nitrogen out of the air, which is abundant in the atmosphere, and then it can use that nitrogen to make protein. And normally this happens in the roots of plants and it appears that this happens in the tiny little fake little hanging root thing that it has. It's, it's just so cute. But the protein level is so high that in Asia, it's been referred to as the vegetable meatball. I, I don't know how widespread that term is. Anyway, the protein is very high. The macronutrient level is something I could not find, but in terms of dry weight in general, duckweed is about 20 to 25% protein, but other ones like mankai that have been bred to have higher protein are actually 45% or higher protein by dry weight, which is, I think that's just, that's too much protein. As for the amino acid ratios, it's actually surprisingly high in branch chain amino acids, in particular ones that those plant protein skeptics always point at, like methionine and lysine, even though you can easily get more than your RDA from other plants. And here's a chart of those amino acids. And as you can see, all of the essential amino acids go past that WHO requirement for, I guess, a solid source of protein. Now, if you were to come at me and ask if this was a superfood, I think I would have to say yes. And it's not like a superfood, like people were claiming bacon was a superfood, which is obviously super high in saturated fat and super not healthy and carcinogen. But in this case, it is super high in a ton of nutrients. It's got B12, it's got a ton of protein and minerals and omega-3s and all these amazing things. And on top of all that, it has a neutral taste, so I've been told I have yet to try it, but that means it's not gonna be like spirulina where you're actually drinking pond water. Now, a couple quick points about sustainability and animal impact of this. First of all, at least from Lentine, it says that they're able to reuse 98% of the water in each batch in the next batch. In addition, they claim to be nearly carbon neutral, but the point is this is pretty awesome. It's a super eco way to grow food. It grows really fast. And another cool thing is that duckweed is quite good at purifying water. Lindy actually used it in her living biofiltration product, as you can see here in this old school footage. And then in terms of animals, I had a crop death panel a little bit ago with Seb, Alex, and Tofu Goddess, and a primatologist named Nick Lyston. That's on Mike the Vegan too, but we were wondering what would be an awesome way to grow plants with a really small amount of crop deaths or virtually no crop deaths. And this is it right here. It's aquaculture. You're not gonna be blasting a bunch of insects or animals to harvest this or grow it. It's a great solution. Okay, now for the final question that is, could this have been a good B12 source for our ancestors? And it's clear, depending on how far you look back, that there have been a lot of our ancestors that were 
virtually vegetarian or some claims that they were vegetarian. And if you're going a while without meat, then you are not going to be getting enough B12 and absolutely people weren't getting it from dairy. You'd also need a lot of eggs each day to get enough B12, which was unlikely for pre-humans. And I calculated those numbers in my Jillian Michaels video if you want to check that out. Now something like insects is also not very promising. So we have to ask the question, were there other sources of B12 possibly from plants. Thinking about this up until about 45,000 years ago, all of our ancestors were down by the equator. They were in like Mesopotamia and Africa. Humans were also always by water. And I've talked about B12 and water a while back, mentioning this study where up to, in certain cases, up to two micrograms or pretty much our daily requirements were found in a liter of water. But we don't have a ton of data on all of the water around the equator, although the bacterial activity would be higher at higher temperatures than where these studies were done. But we also don't know if all that B12 was active and so forth. So I just have to wonder, was there maybe another source and could it have been duckweed? So first we have to ask, was duckweed even in existence where humans evolved? We have at least a current map of the world. And yes, it appears that right down there in Africa, we have some duckweed. Now I'd love to have duckweed samples taken down there and water samples taken down there. But I will say it is plausible. We have a plant with B12 naturally occurring in it that is edible, that is where humans evolved. It's a highly plausible option, but it doesn't end there because it appears that duckweed might not be the only plant that has bioactive B12 in it. Looking to this study that sampled some pretty random plants, they claim that sea buckthorn as well as wheatgrass and a certain type of sunflower referred to as, as horse yellowhead, which is pretty ubiquitous and has been eaten as a condiment and used medicinally throughout human history, that they all have B12 in reasonable amounts. Now those sea buckthorn berries were actually higher in B12 content than the duckweed was. And at first I was skeptical. I was like, are you sure that this is active B12 and not an analog? And actually in the introduction, they warn about analogs and how they can prevent true B12 from being absorbed. So I doubt that in the same study, they would count analogs as real B12. So I think it's pretty likely, but not 100%. And I wouldn't rely on these plants, but it's pretty likely that they do have bioactive B12. So it's clear that we got to a point based off a lot of commonly eaten plant foods that B12 wasn't in plant foods at all. But the reality is we just weren't looking. There are likely a lot of plants that were eaten throughout human history that have B12, aquatic ones and ones that aren't completely aquatic. So in the end, duckweed is amazing. I would love to try some that I don't pull out of my local, you know, fertilizer runoff pond. <laughs> but I also want to put a thank you forward to Jeff Palmer, who is a very long time vegan and natural bodybuilder who has a company Clean Machine. He put me on to duckweed. And I guess as a favor, I want to mention his product that has lentine here by Clean Machine. And I will link that below so that you can buy it if you want. So not sponsored, but super thanks to Jeff for answering all of my random questions about duckweed. And I guess I'll just say, Duckweed is the future. Keep an eye on this awesome tiny little plant with a little tail, because I think it's gonna do big things. Tiny plants doing big things. All right, thanks for watching. Let me know down below what you think about all this. If you've tried it, if you've tried lentine or that mankai stuff or any of that, and feel free to like and subscribe as usual, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.